I'm going to show you how to speedrun your pre-raid best in slot and good alternatives before Dire Maw releases for your Horde Rogue. First is the Mask of the Unforgiven. Form a group for Stratholm and fly from Undercity to Eastern Plaguelands. The flight path is at Light's Hope Chapel. Bring casters and disease removal because this boss evades most physical attacks. The dungeon is located at the top left of the map. The boss is located right here. Take the left path, even if you have the key or higher level lockpicking, it's still faster to go to the left side than the right. A lot of groups will miss this boss, as he is invisible against this corner. When the fight begins, he'll summon three phantoms with around 600 health each. The boss uses Frost Shock and Frost Nova. He has about 13,000 health. Despite being level 57, you cannot solo this, even in full Nax gear with raid consumables, due to the mob's evasion rate. There's no way to skip the trash, even with invisibility potions and stacking stealth gear, you'll still be seen. This boss can be farmed quite quickly with a dedicated group and is actually a good way to farm large brilliant shards with a team. This is the easiest piece to farm. If you want to be a one-eyed pirate, then go get the Rage Fury Eye pack from Hurley, Black Breath, and Black Rock Deaths. Just smash the kegs. When him and his cronies come in, use Distract on the cronies. He'll reset. Then, range pull him into a corner and 1v1 him down. Use all cooldowns and consumables. Next is the Mark of Fordring. You do a very long quest chain that starts with Tyrion in Eastern Plaguelands. I personally prefer Imperial Jewel from Blackrock Depths. Less crit but more stamina. And this amulet gets replaced very quickly later on. You want to gear up ASAP and doing long quest chains is time consuming for the small payoff of 1% crit. If you can, buy a Jungle of the Monkey to hold you over. Best in slot shoulders are True Strike Shoulders, but those are difficult to get with a low drop rate in Blackrock Spire. You can buy a set of Spalders of the Unseen, or farm Stratholme for Worm Tongue Shoulders from Balnazar, located in the bottom left of the dungeon. Many groups farm this part of Strath for Righteous Orbs, so there will always be runs going on. Very easy and fast to acquire compared to the other choices. If you win orbs, they go towards your in-game enchants. Also in Strath, Cape of the Black Baron from Baron Rivendale. Nothing really compares to this cape, but at a 14% chance to drop, you might have to settle for Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape. Also in Strath from Stone Spine, at a 33% chance to drop, though a rare spawn, you'll run into him on the way to Baron regardless. But even then, Black Baron is worth the farm. Otherwise, get a Black Veil Cape from Blackrock Depths Hound Master. For chest armor, you want cadaverous armor, a rare drop from mobs and scolomance. There's really nothing that comes close to this in terms of power. To get to Scolo, ride from Undercity to Western Plaguelands and it's at the bottom right, surrounded by water. Pick up Quill Ward Harness in Razorfin Downs as it will last you until 60. The Deep Fury Bracers are bind on equip dropped off random mobs throughout the world. Buy these up as soon as possible. If you can't, you'll have to settle for a green item to raid with. These things are better than a Nax Ramus quest reward in terms of power. Make sure to show everyone this video if you plan to sell them so the value will spike. Devil Sar Gauntlets are the next item. You aren't in the Dino Mafia, you aren't going to win a mob tag against entire guilds. Just save yourself the stress and trouble and buy them. Bruh, I don't know why it takes 8 whole dinosaurs to make 2 gloves, but they're worth the power spike. Especially with the leggings. Don't settle without these. They're going to be abundant. Otherwise, go cadaverous from Skullamance. Cloud Runner Girdle in Blackrock Spire, but I count that as a raid, and we want the pre-raid gear, right? So Cadaverous Belt goes great with the chest. Find it randomly off mobs and scolomance, just like all the Cadaverous set. Serpentine Stash, it's great buying on equip option that drops off random mobs in the world. Only slightly weaker than Cloud Runner, but it makes up for its stamina, so if you like to PvP like I do, then I'll be going for that one. Double Sar Leggings. It takes 14 whole dinosaur corpses to make. You're literally wearing two minivans worth of families, you know. Imagine if 14 people you knew suddenly became someone's pants. Alternatives are Cadaverous Leggings in Skolomance, or at level 38. You can get a bind on equip called Basilisk Hide Pants, but don't cry to me when you get made fun of for wearing midlife crisis level pants. 
Speaking of midlife crises, join the Discord. Links in the description. Swift Walker Boots are Princess Moira in Blackrock Depths. Make sure to kill her first, otherwise she sometimes bugs out and becomes friendly. She's not even wearing the boots. What, did you rate her shoe collection and pick out the sportiest ones? Mighty Boots of the Monkey are decent. And if you find a Swamp Walker Boots or a good deal on them in the auction house at level 32, buy them fast because they're going to last you until raids. Blackstone Ring from Princess and Maradon. What is up with serial killers wearing items from princesses? As a rogue with enough bandages, potions, and a ghostly strike build? You could solo farm princess by line of sighting or boulder attack, though it would be cheaper to just tag along with a hunter who's farming this anyway. S save yourself the time of having to farm it, you know, for the staff, just to kill the bosses. Just slash who and ask any of the hunters if you could help them out for the ring. They'll just pay like 15 to 20 extra gold than what they would vendor it for, and if the ring drops, uh, they'll gladly do it. Plenty of hunters are just in it for the money anyway. Plenty of people sell this service in chat, so now for your second ring, Magma Forged Band drops off. Random mobs of Black Rock Deaths. Though with all the Scholar runs people will be doing, you can buy an Innervating Band instead and save yourself the time, and that's what this guide is all about. Saving time. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so for trinkets, there's not really any pre-raid stuff that's worth the time investment. There's a quest in Hinterlands for Rune of the Guard Captain, and Maradon has a quest for Mark of the Chosen, but both are wastes of time. They're just not worth it. Just roll out with some engineer sh trinkets, okay? You know, just instead, until you find upgrades through raids. Oh yeah, there's Hinda Justice from Blackrock Deaths, but everyone's gonna roll on that, and it has a really low drop rate. D don't expect it, but hey, if you happen to get one, awesome. Alright, for main hand swords, don't buy a crow blade. Instead, buy a sword of zeal. It's actually overall better than a crow blade, and it's so much cheaper. Funny enough, the description assumes its wielder is a male. We'll see if Blizzard fixes that in classic. Massive McGowan for main hand mace. Also for swords, you can get an Ebon hilt of Marduk from Skullamance. For main hand daggers, do not. I repeat, do not buy materials to craft a heart seeker. Barman Shanker can be solo farm from Blackrock Depths fairly quickly. It's free! And the whole point higher on- one whole point higher on deeps, right? Now don't buy a Gut Ripper at level 40. That dagger is trash and overpriced. For offhand daggers, just buy a Scarlet Chris. They're cheap and way better than any of the dungeon daggers except Bone Scraper. That drops off Baron Rivendare and it's it's very low percent chance and it takes a long time to get to Baron, especially for you know undergeared people. Do not, do not buy a Shadow Blade, okay? If you must use a sword, get Myra's Song from Skolomance Quest Reward. You can also go for Lord Blackwood's Blade, but it's a high stamina sword with armor? So make sure the tank doesn't want it before you roll on it, otherwise you're gonna get cucked from raids. Now for your ranged weapon, a precisely calibrated boomstick has 14 agility. Uh, but these things are very expensive. Everyone's trying to buy one, alright? So just get just get an ancient bone bow from Skolomance for free. And it has 11 agility, and it looks way cooler, alright? You won't get any major upgrades until Max Ramos anyway, so don't even worry about it, okay? The only downside is it's not colored purple. But maybe you can guilt your guild if you're the only member not fully decked out in epics, you know? Just kinda be like, I only have one blue to replace, please! Most bows are very overpriced due to hunter inflation, so just stick with the cheap greens and get this as you grind out Skullamance. It's gonna drop. It's, it drops all the time. So pre-raid enchants, bruh, is you be buying gold again, dog? Listen, don't waste no damn gold on enchants for gear that's on the cheap side. Would you pimp out a Pinto? Save the upgrades for a Toyota at least, dog. Nah, listen, don't let no guilds pressure you into buying and farming for no flasks. Listen, cuz, all your money is gonna go into getting those bind on equips, maxing your trade skill engineering, and getting that epic mount. Mm. Ain't nobody got time to be picking flowers and smacking rocks when day has got they face deep in the Strath and Skolo loop, main. Alright, listen lads. Don't let raiding consume you. Get your gear and get out. Hell, it's gonna take an average of like three months of doing Anixia just for one Bloodfang helmet drop. If you're playing rogue, it means you want to PvP, to gank, grief, and to stealth around. No one picks rogue to PvE with. Come on now, my plans? My plans? I'm gonna get a full set of tier 2, a Perdition Blade, a Core Hound Tooth, and that's that. We'll dub it Gear Early Retirement, you know? Where people can spend their free time doing things that they want, 
with what they have, that's me, you know? Gotta hunt down every alliance in every zone with that set of gear. If you watch the whole thing, leave a comment saying based, and then follow it up with whatever you like, okay? The most amusing one, the most amusing comment, is gonna get a spot in the next video. Also, join join the Discord. Uh, you know, I, I've dubbed it Swell Squad, but we, might, we can change that if it's too cringe. As of this video's creation, there is no one in there, so you can be the very first. Link's in the description. Also, to save me from becoming a wagey in a cagey again, Check some of the other links. I'm actually homeless in a van, eating as cheaply as possible, for real. I figure this is my honest ticket out of retail hell. I got lots of more rogue stuff to offer as well, as live streams right here on YouTube. Don't follow me on Twitch, I don't use that website, okay? If you tweet at me, it's, it's currently locked and I don't really own a cell phone to unlock it with. Also, if you've got a guild that would like a neat no-lifer who can play 16 hours a day for a US-based PvP server, then hit me up, okay? If I find it to be, to, you know, to match my specifications, which we'll talk about, I'm not gonna mention my specifications here, but I'll, I'll be your guild's next rogue, okay? I'm currently in a purgatory of no one to play with. Uh, that's it for now. Next vid might be about the best treasure chest farming or something related to gold farming. We'll, we'll see how well this one does. Now be a bro and stay swole.